Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm going to go ahead and show you some ins and outs of Above VTT. Um, Above VTT is a Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox extension or plugin. It's completely free and works built into uh, dndbeyond.com. So you can see here I'm in a dndbeyond.com campaign page. Um, Above injects this logo with uh, a join SDM button next to it and instructions and a join Above VT button underneath of each character option. Um, I'm going to click join this DM so I can show you some options, um, some ins and outs. You can see it takes you to the splash screen there and um, coming preloaded into above is this tavern scene. It's a nice classic tavern. Um, but they also have a bunch of free options that come preloaded in as well. Um, a huge selection here. You can scroll through and see that there's a bunch. There's even some basic ones. Uh, there's these beautiful one from Dice, uh, Dice Grimorium. And uh, so say I want to do a, um, say a snowy encounter. Uh, so I click this one here. Um, you can see it has the link imported in this player map here. Uh, this input section is where you will uh, paste your uh, link for your maps. So if you want to have a custom map, you would paste it in this spot here. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Um, for now, I'm just going to click Save and Switch, and all these maps are already preset and gridded for you, these preloaded ones. So if I press R or click this ruler button on the top, or I could even just pr push Alt and click, um, you'll see the ruler pops up, and it's already gridded for you very nicely. Um, so go, let's go ahead and drop our players in here. Um, I'm going to push Add Party on this player um, menu option on the uh, right toolbar. Uh, if I push Add Party, it'll add both of the party members in there. Um, you can also see on this menu options, uh, there's the token button, which will individually select that token and uh, add it in there. You can push Sheet, which will open up their whole character sheet from D&D Beyond. Uh, you can have this full view, or you can do this little uh, like mobile-sized view. Um, in here, you can see everything that they have. Uh, you can even push like area of effect type things, and it'll drop out that area of effect. Uh, perfectly sized token out there so you can see that that bonfire would be that big uh, if you want to do a custom area of effect you push this AOE button on the top or just push A it'll drop down that menu uh, I can do a size different colors shapes uh, so say I want a uh, 30 foot cone type in 30 uh, I want it to look like fire and uh, do a cone so we'll just drop that out there and boom right there very nice you can uh, angle it to show how you would spray that and uh, perfect. Um, also over here the DM can push whisper to um, one of the players so you can type something secretly to them so say um, maybe they were doing something very good and you want to give them inspiration secretly um, just type it type it just like that or if you just want to type publicly to them in this game log here on the right um, it shows all the roles and everything you can just say uh, the name of an NPC that they just met so maybe it was like Hagrid the Great and that way they can see that there and they know um, who you were just talking about. Uh, also see their passive perception, uh, their walking speed or uh, movement speed, if they have inspiration here and if you push this little drop down you can get all their little um, bonifiers for each of their um, ability scores. Um, on the tokens you can see that they have these little auras. Uh, it goes from green to red, uh, green being healthy, red uh, being all beaten up. Uh, there's some in between shades like yellow and orange in there of course. Um, you can of course select that you don't need to have these auras on, so you can right click the token and uh, push disable aura if, if you're not a fan of that. Pretty simple. You can also, um, on the settings, on the cog option on the top right here, you can put some default options when you're putting in tokens. And um, you can select that you don't want the borders in there, or the auras in there rather, when you uh, put in the token. So just click that button, it'll disable any order, auras, and yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of different options in here. You can see on the bottom here how that will look when you import your tokens with these settings. So um, you can push hide. You can see they're a little uh, transparent with that um, so that your players wouldn't see that, but you can still see the tokens. Uh, you can set them to be square, uh, lock it in place. You can disable the HP and AC. Uh, you can hide the HP and AC from players, which I always do. Uh, disable borders. I usually keep them on because it's good to have the different shading colors for like hordes of different monsters. I'll show you that in just a little bit. 
uh, disable ORs and show names monsters, and uh, the image aspect ratio, which uh, you can see on this bottom left one. If I were to click that, it would make it stretched out. I usually just uh, leave that unselected like that. Um, going back into here, uh, you can click the character sheet. And um, when you have that open, you can just click a, a roll from right there, and you'll see your roll. Oh, of course, I rolled a natural one there. Um, you see the game log, it shows it right up in there. I'm going to act like that hit, and see the roll for the hit as well. Pretty cool. Um, spells are all in here too. Maybe i um, not familiar what a spell exactly is, and a player uses it. So they click it, and you can press the send to game log button on the top of it, the screen, and it'll send it right to the game log. Uh, pretty cool and handy. Um, so let's go ahead into the monster panel now. It's the next panel over. Um, as I mentioned, uh, different if you add monsters in there, it will have different like uh, border colors. So it's good for differentiating like monsters in a horde. Uh, say I put out a bunch of different, um, let's say, um, we'll say yetis. We're out in the snow, right? So we'll do uh, just click that plus sign to add a yeti. Add another one, and we'll add another one. You can see that they all have different border colors. Pretty cool. So, um, Sariel could be like, all right, I shoot the blue Yeti. And um, she hits and does damage. You can just click this um, input area here, and you can type in what his health goes down to. So, say she does uh, five damage, she goes down to 46. Or you can type in minus five, and it'll do the math for you. Uh, pretty cool. So, say like minus 15, 36, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, you can right click the token and open up the monsters character sheets. Um, by doing this, you can see all their uh, abilities and everything. You can roll from within here. You just push the button. Uh, it sends it to game log. Uh, it has the option to show the roll to the players. I typically do that, so push show to players. 22 would definitely hit, so let's roll that damage. It does 5 points of slashing damage. Um, plus that, 2 points of cold damage. Pretty cool. So, um, yep, you can also send these images to the game log. So push send to game log, show them what kind of beast they're fighting, and you can click it and enlarge it. Kind of cool. Um, but what is a combat without adding them to a combat tracker? So we can go ahead and select all of them, uh, right click, and push add a combat tracker. You can also just do that individually. And you can see up here, um, or if you push C, it'll add all of them to combat, and it'll automatically roll the initiative for your yetis or your monsters for you. And then you just have to uh, roll the initiative for your players, or your players would do that, of course. So uh, I'll just show you an example. Rolls the initiative. This gets a 13, as it's a combat tracker, uh, right there for you. Um, let's go ahead and show you uh, some drawing options. So say uh, I point out that there's um, 30 feet from them, they see a hole in the ground. Uh, I can push one of the options here, so there's circle, square, cone, line, brush, polygon, etc. Uh, select the color, so let's say I just choose a black from there, and 30 feet away, I draw this hole in the ground. Um, so I did the transparent fill there, one, so they could see that, you know, it's just like this small area, but maybe I just should have filled it instead. So I click this fill, and uh, I'm going to go back over it, and boom, there's my hole in the ground don't want it any there anymore, that's fine, just push erase, select over it, it's gone. Um, let's go ahead and add a, another monster in here. Um, let's go ahead and add a rock. So that's a, that's a big bird, right? Oh, but what's that? Oh, I made my own custom token for this. Well, it's a Forgotten Adventures token, but I imported it in here. And so, um, to get it to kind of looking right, I'll set up some options for it. Uh, set it to square and set it around so it doesn't obscure the shape of it. I'll disable that uh, border uh, so that it lets it be a little more free. Um, go ahead and adjust the size too. So you can right click, push size, and, and I'm going to make it so that it actually looks like a rock's size. So I'm going to make it like 70 feet from right there. I know rocks are a little bit bigger than that, but it does the job for showing the size on the map. So now you got this massive, massive token over here. Um, go ahead and get rid of that. Um, and so to add your own token to these monsters, um, we're going to, oh, that's a little glitch actually. 
happens every now and then. Um, just refresh that. I'm gonna join back as the DM. It's okay. Go to the monsters. <clears throat> and um, all right. So let's search that rock again. If I click on these two lines over here, it shows that I have these tokens loaded in. Um, you can just drag and select which one, or you can t add in a custom link right there. Um, let's go back to the scenes real quick. So um, about custom links. So if I want to add my own scene, I click that scene button on the top, uh, the plus sign, and edit. Uh, I'll go ahead to my like Google Drive or wherever I have my maps hosted, but um, I've had most success from hosting from like a Google Drive box or uh, something like that. I'll make sure that the links are shareable so that anyone with them can see. And I'm going to um, take that link and copy and paste it into this player map area. I'm going to name it uh, Tower. And I'll push Save. Actually, I'm going to push Cover with Fog because then I'm going to cover this whole scene with Fog and save and switch. So now it is covered with fog. My players can see it. Say they come up to this door. I want to reveal some areas to them. Um, so let's go ahead and use this square tool to first reveal that like uh, that first front area. Maybe I should use the polygon to kind of get some more. Just kind of click around a little bit. All right, so I revealed this area to the players. <clears throat> As you can see, it's not scaled properly for them. So I'm going to go ahead and delete them out and quickly push edit in the Super Mega Wizard, align to grid since this image has a grid. Um, I'm going to find an area where that grid is clear and scale this little box to a 3x3 three three grid, um, a little square. Push when it's good, select 5 feet. Now it should be scaled so that they look proper in there. Yes. Alright, they head on in and let's reveal a little bit. So let's go ahead and do a circle since this is a circle. And now the players will be able to see that whole area from that fog. Um, pretty simple to use. Um, also, if you own any D&D &D Beyond content uh, from any of the books, all those maps will be set up and preloaded for you as well. So let's go into like Candlekeep Mysteries. Uh, let's do the Joy of Extra Dimensional Spaces. And let's do that uh, mansion. So import that. You'll see it has a player map and a DM map. Um, I'm going to first show you what the player map would look like. Um, which will be have like none of that like information. Uh, you can see it's also already set up for you. See the the measurements are all set up perfectly. If you want to turn on your grid, you just push Edit, Manual Grid, Data, and then Show Grid. You just input one on that spot, and there you go. You can see the grid perfectly. Uh, if you want to see the DM's map, which is you would only see on your side as the DM. You just input one on that input area, and now you can see all of that information correlates to the uh, adventure book or the module. And um, all right, so let's see. We um, let's go back to the tavern. Let's go ahead and put our players in here, the party. Let's go ahead and set them at the tavern. Um. What's a tavern without some tavern music? So we have the sound area, and um, in here, same as like the uh, player maps, you just have to input a usable link that's viewable by anyone into here. You just push enable edit, add a section, or I'm sorry, add sound. A section will create a whole section for you, and then you'll see a new thing will pop up. <clears throat> Type in the sound name, say tavern, and then you put in your link here. As you can see right above it, I've already done that, so push link or play there you can adjust the volume if you like usually have it set down pretty well um, <clears throat> as of right now it's only adjustable on the DM side but not the end of the world there um, close that up and you can also add different sound effects in here which I think is cool because then I can add uh, things like um, people talking in the background so like this pub crowd I have just adds like some like ambiance sounds like you're actually in a bar 
Um, let's add some NPCs and some uh, random tokens in there. So you can see there's this token option on the top. Above has a bunch of tokens built in there for you. You can add your own by um, doing the same thing with like the links from Google Drive. You just uh, push add token and put all your, your stuff here, your link there, your token name, uh, how you want it to appear, and then it'll work just fine. You can see I've got a few of my own custom options here. I'm going to go ahead and add a bartender. So just go into commoners. <clears throat> I'm just going to drag and drop someone in there. Uh, let's go ahead and just add some other people that are in the crowd too. Not sure why there would be drow in here, but we got drow in this bar. Alright. So, um, yep, we got them all in there. Um, maybe I want to add a note about this area. Or about the one drow in particular. So, um, what's cool is that you can right click a token and push uh, notes, create edit note, and say, um, uh, has stolen from local hero. Um, I don't know, some random note, drawing a blank on something good right now, but you can see this little note icon pops up, you just double click it, and it'll pop up for you too. And you can uh, either select to make it visible to the players also so that they can do the same, or you can uh, make it unselected so that they don't see it. But you can also click to force open to players, which will force it open on their screen. Uh, cool thing to have little notes pop up for them. Um, what I also like to do is I'll pop out this uh, custom question mark token I made. I'll make it, um, I put it out here and I'll usually make it hidden. Uh, I'll make it kind of large so that I can see it, but they can't see it. And then I'll add a note about the area. So I'll say maybe this is the, um, the happy tavern, uh, home of the drow and, uh, rogues. I don't know. Uh, famous drink, the uh, blood red wine, yada yada yada. So um, I have that all set set up in here, so easy to see these notes for when I go into this area. Um, let's go into. There's also the notes up here. Um, you can click adding a chapter. So say tavern in uh, town A. Add a whole section, it's like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, combat tracker. Forgot to show you guys that. Um, that you can do the different rounds in there as well. So you just click next and it'll show you who's up and uh, which round it is. Uh, if I add, say, these like, guys all to the combat tracker too. If I just want to push, find out where this one guy is, push find. Uh, and it'll highlight and ding right to him. You can also double click and it'll ping that too. Uh, you can also force someone to look in an area by double clicking a spot. Uh, gives you this little blue radar on the player's map. It'll do that and then also force them to look in that area. Um, and then last but not least, at least I believe this should be last, is uh, the YouTube maps. So you can actually uh, import YouTube maps in here. There's also ones that are already loaded in here for you. Um, so pretty cool with that. You just push that, it's a video, save and switch. You can see this beautiful map, but the audio is a little loud. We have an audio tab, and adjust the animated map volume. Turn that down a little bit, turn off the tavern music now. And uh, yeah, you have this beautiful animated map that players uh, really enjoy a lot of times. Put on some background sounds of some birds flying around and stuff. Um, yeah. Pretty cool. Um, another thing with the game log, you can also just paste a URL of an image in here and it'll show it to your uh, players or in the game log as well. So say, um, say I want to share this image of a uh, airship. Just paste this link, and of course I used a dead link. Uh, let's try another one. This wolf. There we go. Uh, so it shows that image, you can click it, it pops it up, very nice, looking good, um, yeah, I think that about covers everything in here for the most part, um, let's see, 
monsters tokens, yada yada yada. Yeah, look good. Uh, if you have any more questions about anything uh, in above BTT or its features and functions, uh, feel free to give me a comment and uh, let me know what you had in mind. Thanks for tuning in.